see. This is episode 11 anime review from Chibi for Reezer. Let's check it out. For once in a very long time. No cliffhanger. Cliffhanger! 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 No cliffhanger this time. ReZero does not end on a cliffhanger that oh makes me want to scream and be very, very upset. I swear to God, bro. If your 7M video right now is gonna spend the next two fucking minutes talking about how there was no cliffhanger and you don't talk about the anime, I'm gonna be so mad. And I am glad to see that. I'm very, very, very glad to see an episode mm -hmm. without a cliffhanger like nice. how it's been in recent episodes. Agreed. Because this... This was such a perfect ribbon on top for this arc, and I love it. I love it was the a good characterization ending. and development the twins got in this episode. Yes, all the backstory stuff is pretty much explained, like, all the different behaviors from Ram and Rem, like why Ram is so proud to give Rem credit, why Ram is always so proud of her little sister, even though Ram didn't do anything. It's because back then, she didn't want little Rem to feel, like, insecure. And then there was the whole, like, um being like an oni and rem not feeling she even deserves to live and subaru like acknowledging her worth and her just like gushing and having this crazy rom-com moment where the sun's out the wind's out and that was pretty much a confession moment without a confession happening so i think the intimacy with rem and rem especially rem right now is on another level and also i love getting to see our main character, Subaru, actually happy for a change and showing that he finally can get the date he wanted with Amelia. I still think that shit's cringe of how he constantly forces a date upon her by favors rather than it just being a spontaneous thing. And remember, anytime this shit's too happy, just realize that the despair is gonna hit. So I'm not getting comfortable with the happiness right now. That made me smile. I was so happy to see how he got what he wanted. And I love his little speech to the twins and what he said to one of them. He was like, you should look forward tomorrow. Instead of always looking at the past and thinking about the past every single day and, you know, looking back on it, you should look forward to tomorrow. I mean, look at what you could do tomorrow, you know, what you could eat and cook or whatever. Just look forward to tomorrow. And it's kind of ironic who was actually saying that the to guy the twins. Because let me explain. We already know what type of character Subaru is. We already know what he's been through. As the audience, we get to see the outside perspective of what is going on. And we know he's been through a hell of a lot. He's been through a lot of hell. He's died a lot. And it's very ironic of all characters to say to look forward to tomorrow is the very character that constantly has to look at the past. Regress, exactly. It's sad. Because, you know, with him dying constantly, he has to always look at the past. He always has to go back to the past, look at the past, and figure out how to overcome the past for he can look forward to tomorrow. So it's kind of sad, but ironic how that was kind of said in this episode. And I'm wondering about the writer actually meant it in that way. Probably. So I really like the details on that. Just seeing how that conversation, that little speech that Subaru said, and it kind of go goes along with his character of how he's constantly going back to the past and then also trying to make his way for a new tomorrow. Now, episode is very simple. I mean, it really is. It kind of- Yeah, what really happens? Just like more fights, Roswell Clutch, it was pretty much a Popeye episode, right? There's not much dialogue and lore except for the actual flashback moments and the witches cult attacking the Oni clan and Roswell happening to show up there. That was very suspicious. And then it was just hype fight, opening playing, feels like a finale to a season, triumphant defeat, Roswell clutching. And at the very end, more important lore with Roswell and his goal to like slay the dragon, right? So he pretty much confirmed that his goal is to kill the dragon, and that's why he cannot afford to have Amelia lose her ascension to the throne. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. And there's the Rem and Subaru talk. Kind of just answers a lot of questions we've had and concludes this entire arc. You have it to where Subaru gets his entire curses cleared, he's no longer cursed, all the different beasts, you know, the hellhounds and stuff, they're completely defeated. Well, there's still that one girl that she disappeared. It's still mysterious. The one orphan girl with purple hair that Subaru didn't know the name of, who most likely broke the barrier and brought the witch fiends in, she's just gone. I don't know if she got caught up in Roswell's fucking carpet bombs, but I will keep a note of her for future. And they're no longer alive, so Subaru doesn't have to worry about the curses. But the one thing that was very strange I noticed about in this episode was that the curses are apparently still there, but they just won't activate 
because there's no the more witch fiends are dead that started and you know gave him the curses so that that's kind of sketchy though it's not like this curse is gone it's that the curse is gonna it's that the curse is forever dormant and can't be activated because those witch fiends that gave those curses no longer exist but it's still kind of sketchy that's weird though so the curses are still there apparently from what i understood from the subs now i could be misunderstanding it i could that, that's a possibility but from the subs i read and the way i interpreted it it made me think that the curses are still in his body but they won't disappear but they will never activate because the creatures that you know put him in his body are dead so i wonder what that exactly means i mean Maybe in the future, this is going to bite us in the ass. Maybe somehow there's a different way to activate those curses, despite those witch fiends biting us are gone. I don't really like it. Maybe there is a possibility someone else might be able to activate them or something. Who, who the hell knows? Now, another thing this episode concludes is kind of the mystery around the twins, Rim and Rom. We get to see how they were brought up, their upbringing, how they survived more. Fuck the Oni clan, dude. Oni clan garbage people about how they were demons and how they were as children you know who was stronger and how they benefit and help each other and also get to see how one of the twins feel very guilty for thinking that it's good that you know she lost her horn and it, it was a very that was a very realistic again very good way of portraying like these human emotions where even if rem was protected by ram she still felt this like relief or a sense of happiness when the horn broke off because now the shadow looming over her does not exist anymore. And it's very fucked up, but also very raw and such a real emotion. But then she takes note of that, right? She acknowledges it, and then she uses it to, like, atone for her past sins. And that's why she's the way she's now. Sad moment, and I love the characterization it got because it's been built up for a while now. We know that these twins have been built up to be a little bit different. You know how one is, you know, kind of bad in some areas. And the it's crazy that, like... Ram was the prodigy, but like you would never guess that based on what we see. But because Rem was always trying to compensate for her lack of powers by doing household chairs, that's why, that's why I guess it makes sense that she just better at like maid duties. But Ram was the one man, and she lost her horn for whatever reason. Did Roswell do it intentionally? Was it just a coincidence that he showed up there just in time? He's like putting mana into that slit where that horn is supposed to come out of during the nightly like tending sessions like what the fuck is going on there there can't be a coincidence the other one's good in some areas and vice versa i mean it's been built up for a while since they were kind of introduced and i like how this episode just kind of ties that you know ribbon on top to conclude their characterization and see how they're going to start relying more on subaru and not just thinking he's you yeah and not just ram but like how rem is going to rely on subaru because like again like that scene where she was crying with the sun coming out and the curtains blowing in the wind, that shit was straight up a rom-com confession scene. It was. It, without the confession, you know? So with that level of intimacy, what the fuck is Subaru going to do? Because he didn't even, like, accept it. Does he even know that she loves him? I'm not sure. He still immediately went and, like, forced to date on Amelia's hand after Rem did all that shit. So I'm going to assume that Subaru doesn't really care too much about like rem's affection to him right now like how is that going to develop useless but they're going to rely on him and lean on him as a good friend so that was a good moment in this episode as well one of probably the best moments of this episode besides amelia saying yeah sure i'll go on a date with you super <laughs> yeah right there what what did chibi say yeah sure i'll go on a date with you even chibi the way he said it already proves my point of Amelia being burdened with another fucking date promise, even though she probably doesn't even want to go on one in out of a romantic intent, but is more out of fucking pity because of the favors that, like, apparently we owe him. That, oh my god, dude. That, that is definitely what our MC needs. I mean, he, he really worked for that fucking date. I mean, let, let's just all take a moment to think. I don't know, man. <clears throat> I don't think that this is what the MC needs. I think the MC needs a fucking reality check and ask himself, like, why is the only way that you can get a date is through these fucking four situations where the fucking, the, the respondent feels like, oh, I feel like I have to do this. A a is it just me? Am I being weird about this? I'm looking at the situation and I feel sorry for Amelia because of how much she has to accept these fucking forced hands out of pity. And it's not even out of romance or love either. Maybe friendship? I think that there is some level of friendship there. 
but not for a single moment have I ever thought that Emilia is like romantically engaged with Subaru at this current moment of the story. But I do see Rem. I think that Rem definitely is. How hard he worked for that fucking date. He's been dying constantly. He's went through some fucking trauma, okay? By by some weapons. You're getting crushed and all that and have his arms cut off and stuff. He's went through some fucking trauma. So seeing him finally being able to go on a date and go to the town with Amelia, that was the best moment too. One of the best moments of the episode because I'm like, finally, our main characters. Now nah, I'm being a fucking hater, bro. Straight up, yeah. The lap pillow, the dates. I am a very self-aware person. Because I've been in those situations where I thought I was being the knight in shining armor. I thought that I was the one being a gentleman. But at the end of the day, I was being fucking cringe. I was being so... And then I self-reflected on those moments. And then I realized, like, this is fucking weird. And now I am seeing someone repeat my mistakes. And I'm like, this feels weird. That's why I am so against... <laughs> Whenever Subaru does this shit, because like to the audience, yeah, if you're just watching this for fun, it's like, yeah, he got a nice date for sure. But like, how did he get it? How does the, how does Amelia feel about it? How does the girl feel about it? And when you try to like understand it from that perspective, the more you'll realize how like weird and creepy kind of comes off. He's not fucking suffering. He's getting to have fun for a change, even until he dies again. And then he, he goes through an entire loop again with the next arc. So that's the next question I got to get into. What will the next arc be about? Because we know... I hope it goes through the selection exam arc, man. Not the, not the selection exam. I wish there was a selection exam. The uh, candidate selection uh, fucking throne succession war arc, right? Like Whatever that's going to be. Like, in the openings, we've seen other girls show up, right? Clearly, there's, like, other candidates amongst Amelia and Felt. And who knows what Felt is up to with Reinhardt. But, like, yes, I expect that to happen next. But we're going on a detour. Tonight, we're going to watch Memory of Snow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut that shit into three parts. And you're going to fucking eat that shit up on YouTube. And then... I think the next OV, I, I, I need to check the watch order, but um, we will watch Memory of Snow before we go into the next arc, and we'll finish that tonight. Well, you know, the throne, the, the game for the throne is kind of building up, like a throne war or something, or Game of Thrones, there you go, good name. So we know it's building up, there's a lot of people trying to do some malicious things to each other, and we do know that the beasts that attacked the village most likely were there because of someone else trying to interfere with that, you know, area, because we do find out that the mm. child I talked about yeah, she gone, bro. She disappeared. Suspect as fuck. A couple episodes back, that was very different and off because Subaru remembered everybody. He remembered all the children, but that but the one purple girl. girl. Remember, I talked about it a couple mm -hmm. episodes back. Well, apparently that I remember, girl Chibi. is a mystery, and she disappeared. She gotta be the one that took off the barrier. She gotta be witch cult. She gotta be like she's gone now. I don't know where she went. Maybe she got caught up in Roswell's carpet bombing. But like again. Keep a mental note of her for when she might show up in the future. And most likely has a connection to whatever happened to Subaru and how he got cursed by the beast and why the town was getting attacked. And like, what if she can fucking activate the curses, right? The curses are dormant right now. I don't know, man. Like, mm, we'll see about that. That girl has a connection to it. Has a connection to all of that. So it doesn't seem like my theories were far-fetched when it came to that event when, you know, the little girl was very different from all the other children. So I wonder how she's going to kind of be used in the future of the series because obviously she's going to come back. She's probably going to be a reoccurring Yeah, and I hope she can't fucking activate the dormant curses because that would be fucking broken and we can't do anything about it unless we kill her before. Character, maybe sometime in the future when we find out more about the candidates of, you know, being the next successor to the throne. But for now, though, focusing on the next arc, though, I'm curious where it's going to go because... There's a lot of questions that I guess Subaru has to clear up. I mean, he did promise that he would explain more about the witch's curse or everything he can, but we do know that every time he tries to talk about it, it hurts, and we saw it last week. Yeah, and I thought he would never use it again, but now it's one of our most effective tools. Like, Subaru can't really... He's, again, he's not like a Reinhardt, right? He can fight, but this is just, again, a regular human with kind of superhuman powers, honestly. The athletics that he does is kind of fucking crazy, but... With Shamak, with this AoE taunt of Return by Death leak, there's very creative ways that we can be useful in a fight and buy time and strategize. And, you know, Roswell shows up and handles it all. We got, we, we got bailed out there. So I wonder how that's going to go, too. Like, how is he going to be able to talk about it and make it where, you know, she doesn't distrust him? I mean, after all the shit Subaru has done, I think. I don't she as in Satala right now? 
Well, distrust may not matter to Satala. Because again, my theory, it all goes back to Satala giving the regression powers to Subaru the moment that Amelia and Subaru both died in the cellar. The promise was made there. And somehow there's a logical gap of how he got the powers, but Satala probably gave him the regression as she recognized his desire for Amelia to live. And then you got to ask yourself, well, why would Satala care about Amelia living? Because Amelia looks like the half-elf uh, half self silver hair characteristics of Satala. And if she is like a demon lord style that got sealed away by, again, the dragon, the king, sorry, the hero and the sage, that means that Amelia must be an important component in reawakening or breaking some kind of seal of the sealed witch, meaning she's some sort of catalyst, a sacrifice, a vessel, something. That's why even if Subaru fucks around like this, as long as the end goal is Amelia being safe, and as long as the witch's cult's plan of like releasing the witch's seal is still in play, don't think Satella will care too much. Because like we're abusing this shit, right? We're, we are spamming this shit, and she has shown that she's going to grip her heart but she has yet to follow through on the actions, right? I'm like expecting us to die. For her to literally crush our heart and regress back to a previous checkpoint or something. But that hasn't happened yet, so still, you know, we're spamming this move. I don't think there's really any reason really to distrust him because he's done so much good, helped him out so many times, and he would have died if it wasn't for the master of the house to come in and save him and kill yeah, all the Roswell beasts at the, end there. Of the episode, which was badass, by the way. I like that scene. So yeah, episode overall of ReZero. It was a very good episode. I think this was personally a really good way to end this arc. It was a very happy moment and probably one of the very few. The subs that I'm using are, I think, a little bit more sweaty than the subs that you guys have watched when it first aired. That's why even stuff like Barusu being balls or like <laughs> Nechan being sissy, it, it's more for like the English audience, I guess, more English speaking. It's supposed to like make more like quote unquote sense rather than like fucking Japanese sub enjoyers. But I think that the translation is more correctly to be hero. But yes, Sword Saint is obviously more meaningful to us because we know what a Sword Saint is. Two happy episodes we're going to get from ReZero because I've been told that the series is going Also, there's no reason that they wouldn't have Sword Saint again because they've called Reinhard Sword Saint, you know? Like, uh, they've, in the same subs that we're using right now, like, Sword Saint was mentioned when mentioning Reinhardt, yet that specific term was not used when Biko was talking about the hero, so just little differences there. It's going to get darker and darker as, you know, it continues on, and if so, I kind of have high expectations for the series because I've enjoyed the ride so far from start- Episode- honestly, my expectation has been high before I even started the series. Episode 1 already confirmed that, like, oh yeah, oh yeah, this, this shit's gonna be fucking juicy, full of actual- world building content and a story that I actually give a fuck about and by episode 3 I'm like I already thought that this might be the best fucking isekai by episode 3 genuinely like there's, there hasn't been much isekai that's gotten me that hooked in that few in episode Mishoko Tensei took a long time I could already tell that it's big and a bountiful world but like it's a slow burn in the beginning for a bit right Tensura as well Innocent Shadow popped off pretty fast, actually, by episode 5. But, uh, you know, it, you can't really compare Innocent Shadow with series like this. This is like, they're, they're trying to be serious. They're trying to really flesh out an, a, like a, an amazing world full of death and lore and all these different things for me to give a fuck about. And I think that, again, it's just... I think ReZero might be number one. We gotta let it cook, right? We're only 11 episodes in. We haven't seen the bad parts of ReZero yet. Specifically, I guess, the shitty things with what Reinhardt, like, sorry, what um, Subaru does, because apparently, because, like, so far, we've been on the Subaru glaze, but I hear that he falls off fucking hard, and there's going to be very painful episodes for us to get through. And, you know, compare that to Rudy from Mushoku Tensei, he's always fucking painful to watch. Subaru right now, we've only seen the good side, so I'll be waiting for the bad sides. Start to finish to this very episode, and I can't wait to see how the next half of ReZero is. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day. I've given you my thoughts. Please go check out Chibi's channel. And I will see you on the next video.